One morning, a boy named Zhuo Yang rushes to the bathroom mirror and simultaneously grips his left eye. However, he finds a mysterious red symbol has taken a hold of his eye. It's then revealed that he can see some kind of information atop his head, including his own name. But just like any normal person, he shrugs it off and continues to school like nothing ever happened, even if his eye begins to cosplay Sasuke. Nevertheless, at school, he reveals that he's just the average type of guy with such average looks, but with below average grades as he's going to cram school for retaking a failed exam that everyone seemingly passes. He's also not good at sports but loves to game a lot so he can't defend himself when he gets thrown around. As such, he gets clapped as he got caught liking a popular girl. Regardless, while thinking back to what just happened, his eye begins to act up again and it begins to take over as he starts seeing information about everyone else. Ovian then begins to think to himself that the reason this is all happening is because he was playing too much ranked Valorant, but the information is too clear and detailed to just be hallucinations. He also notices that he sees the correct names and ages, but is oblivious to the rest of the information seen, such as difficulty and interest. However, he realizes that the information about the girls are a little bit more detailed compared to the guys. Unluckily for him, he begins to notice that all interest of the girls are at exactly zero, so he begins to feel ashamed about himself because he believes he's that uninteresting. Eventually, he gets over himself and finds the popular girl, Kim Ran, surrounded by two popular guys asking her out. Meanwhile, his friend Park ji asks if he wants to go play Tekken afterwards, but he declines saying he needs to go study. Suddenly, his special eye activates again, so he looks at Ran again and finally notices that her interest level is at level 1. Now in disbelief, he begins to stare and refuses to believe that the school's Queen Bee may actually have an interest in him. Unfortunately, she notices that he was staring at her. She then begins to call them out and asks why he's looking at people with such disgusting eyes, causing the entire class to bring their attention to the two. He proceeds to break down and continues by claiming that she was seeing things, so she comes closer and asks if he's saying that she was lying. Ran then screams that she caught him secretly looking at her entire suit of very nice armor, so she whips out her hand causing his life to begin flashing before him, thinking that it's all over for him now. An eternity passes so he looks up and notices Ran as if she was frozen in time. It's then revealed that the king's ability named Stopwatch has been activated causing all time to stop for exactly 5 minutes. At the same time, a pop-up has appeared saying that a tutorial quest has started where he must make Ran shout really hard. If completed, the target's interest will increase by 20 and the target domination will also increase by 20 points. Now thoroughly confused, our boy has become a chat and begins to awkwardly smile. Fast forward 5 minutes and Ran is found shaking on the ground. Meanwhile, everyone is shocked that somehow loser Ouyang has suddenly disappeared. Ran then instantly finds herself feeling really weird, as if something just happened in a flash. She continues to tremble and wonders why her body suddenly feels super weird, if you know what I mean, wink wink. Regardless, just like the Flash, we find Ouyang somehow back at home during all the commotion, where he murmurs to himself that everything could have totally got out of control. Regardless, we find out that during the entire five minutes that time was frozen, Homeboy actually took the opportunity to complete his quest and instantly warped home. Upon completion, his eye once again activates and notifications claiming that he has leveled up began popping up. With his newfound level, he gained a brand new skill called the Eye of Incubus. He then finds another notification that popped up telling him to check his status window. Fortunately for him, the game-like window appeared before him showing all kinds of information about himself. However, he realizes that his stats are actually pretty bad even though he has a cool nickname. Eventually, he finds another notification claiming that he has two incomplete quests. As such, his curiosity made him tap on the window which opened up his incomplete quest list tab. There, he finds that one of his quests involves strength leveling while the other is about conquering. Ouyang is then quick to complain about his strength training quest, but shrugs it off as he remembers that he just gained an incredible ability that can literally freeze time. As such, he begins to celebrate as he can now leave the life of being a loser, and can become reborn as a true powerful man. He's then quickly interrupted by someone saying excuse me behind him, so he goes to investigate, only to find his red head next door neighbor. He's then shocked to find out that such a pretty girl lives next to him, almost just as shocked as me to find out that Ouyang lives by himself. Nevertheless, he asks her what brings her here, only for her to reply by asking him to keep it down as she's busy prepping for her exams. During their conversation, Ouyang realizes that he can now see detailed information about others, but is unable to do so as he does not have enough M.E. He then sighs as he tries to begin figuring out what exactly that meant, forgetting that his neighbor is still in front of him. As he crutches his eye, he begins allocating stat points to M.E., allowing him to successfully unlock the extra details of Park Nami. One of those extra details is the aforementioned measurements and marriage status, 
causing Ouyang to begin to scoff at the boyfriendless Nami for calling him out. He then proceeds to stop time by activating stopwatch level 2. At this very moment, he begins to grow a couple inches taller as he confirms that he has actually gained the ability to stop time. And well, the rest was history. As such, he calls out her name and proceeds to do the same thing he did to Ran, unfortunately for him. Things don't go according to plan as he gets zapped and punished for coming into contact with someone at interest level 0. Hoyang then falls to his knees while Nami tries to help him as she thinks he's fallen sick. Back at school the next day, Ouyang is busy thinking about his previous encounter, but gets rudely interrupted by no other than Ran herself. This time, she asks for Ouyang to come with her to the bathroom. There, she asks about what truly happened on the previous day, only for Ouyang to act as if nothing ever happened. This causes Ran to scream saying he did it, that it was him that made her undies disappear. But ever since he leveled up, Ouyang has become a different man and decides to turn it on her, saying that she's doing all of this just to attract him. Ouyang continues to push on, making Ran begin to visibly shake. However, she reminds him that they are still inside the girl's bathroom, and starts to threaten him that she'll scream only for Ouyang to rebuke her by saying, sure, if you can. Now attempting to call his bluff, Ran opens her mouth, but Ouyang is quick to activate his eye, allowing him to once again stop time. Moments later, Ran finds herself alone and unable to talk, as it's revealed that Ouyang can now turn on or turn off a target's mind. He then reappears and asks her if she was even slightly surprised, however, he rambles on by claiming that although her mind is awake, she can't even speak or move. He continues on by saying that she should have been nicer. Ultimately, he brings her closer and tells her that he's basically a demon king, just like the ones in games or anime. Nevertheless, what happens next is something I cannot show, so just use your imagination. Oh, and yeah, he basically begins controlling her and finds out what she really likes. You know? Now, after a couple minutes, a countdown began telling him that his ability is about to wear off in 10 seconds. Unfortunately, he was stuck in a compromised position, leading to him being unable to leave. With his ability now gone, he begins to think he's literally screwed. He then continues to panic as Ran begins to come alive. However, the turntables and Ran's interest level spikes to 40. Now, thinking quickly on his feet, Ouyang begins to attempt scaring Ran and asks if she liked pineapple juice. With his remark, she quickly gets embarrassed, but he tells her that there's not a single reason to be embarrassed at all. He then mentions that with her drinking pineapple juice, they have formed a magical contract, proclaiming that his pineapple contains powerful magic and curses. Thus, the girl who drinks will become his. Boyan then warns her that if she does not listen to him at all, she will quickly perish. And just like that, she actually believed everything, including how Santa is actually real. To his surprise, Ram begins to actually cry and she even begins to cling on to him. To defuse the situation, he explains that even though he's the great demon king, she's not actually instantly cursed. Instead, he mentions that for a human, she's actually his type. She's pretty and she's even fit, so she's the demon king's type. He then continues on and just warns her to just fully obey him and everything will be okay. Ouyang even mentions that if she does great, then she'll gain wealth, fame, and everything else that she can imagine. However, the bathroom door begins to open. So he takes her arm and the two end up stuck in a stall. Now taking the opportunity, he tells her it's some sussy time, so he asks her to show him some of her talent. As such, the two end up on a scenic bike ride inside the stalls, but it's hard to keep the electric motor quiet from the rest of the room. Unfortunately, they accidentally filled up the bike too much. 